If your React component is cluttered with a bunch of use states when you're dealing with forms, then you're probably doing something wrong. Let me show you the right way of dealing with them. All right, so that's gonna be our example, which is basically a couple of input fields. So let's go back to the code and I'm gonna show you the bad way of structuring your React forms. So here we have a registration form component and we have a bunch of useless use states declarations, right? Looks kind of weird. And here we have the HTML. So let's take a quick look. First of all, we have a form element and inside the form element, we have form groups. All right, so, and yeah, of course we also have a button. Okay, so you might ask, what is this form.control or form.label? Well, it's the same thing as an input field, but since I'm using bootstrap above, just to style our form kind of better. Here you can see that I'm importing form and importing the button component. To make it look a bit better like this and have some colors, I'm using form.control, but never mind. All right, well, what else we have? We have an on change event, which is gonna be triggered every time a user presses a key. And it's gonna have this E, which is an event. And we're gonna set the value of a state by passing e.target.value and it's gonna save it on the fly. And it's and I'm doing the same thing for every input field, okay? One thing to note though, we have this name attribute for every input field, but just keep it keep it in mind, it's gonna come into play later. And also we have a button. So how do we send the data to the backend? Okay, how do we submit the form? So I would create an on-click event and pass this function called submit form. Of course, it doesn't exist at the moment. So let's go up and create it. So like this, I'm gonna declare a variable with the same name, and it's gonna be an anonymous function. Like this, and inside this anonymous function, we're gonna first of all accept a parameter, basically an event. And what we're gonna do first, is we're gonna make sure that we prevent the default behavior of a form, because if you don't do that, the HTML, basically the default behavior of the HTML form is actually making a GET request and reloading the page, and we don't want that. And also, let's console log our values. These values are coming from the state, okay? So I'm gonna console log first name, last name, email, and password, and these are gonna be in an object, and they're coming from here, and not from here, okay? Just to make it clear. And now let's kind of save the file and go to our app and look at the console log or the console after I fill this out. And this is my email and a password. Click submit. And here you can see that it basically outputs the payload that we would send to the backend, okay? Everything's good so far, but first of all, as I said, this is not a this is not the best practice. So it's a bad practice to have so many use states. What if we have like 10 input fields or even more? Are you gonna declare all of them here? Probably not. And the second thing is that we're not utilizing the HTML's default behavior for submitting forms. So putting an on-click event on a button is not the right way because we have this type submit on the button, right? So how do you do it properly? Well, the form element itself has a submit event. So, but in a TSX world or React world, we are declaring it like this. So on submit, and we're gonna pass the same function. So nothing changes when it comes to the function um, calling, but we also need to remove these on changes because they are no longer needed. We're gonna have a one place where we deal with the form data or with the payload. So I'm gonna delete this one and I'm gonna delete this one too. All right, looks much cleaner. Okay, now let's go back to our submit form. Okay, and just make sure that you remember these, you do right. So we're gonna grab the values from them this time. So let's create a variable called form data and it's gonna equal to a new form data. What is this new form data? Well, it's actually kind of a constructor, a JavaScript constructor. And I'm gonna hover over it in a second. But first of all, we need to pass e.target, 
okay, so that it takes values. And it says, provides a way to easily construct a set of key value pairs representing form fields, okay? And these key, key value pairs are gonna come from the name attribute that you saw before. Now, what about console logging it out? So I'm gonna put form data and save it, and let's go to the app. And okay, my values disappeared, so I'm gonna just put my first and last name, click Submit, and here we have form data, but for some reason it's empty. I wonder why. Well, turns out the form data is actually in a different format yet that it doesn't show up so easily. So let's create another variable called payload. And what we're gonna do is use object from entries and pass the form data. What from entries does is basically, let's hover over it, returns an object created by key value entries for properties and methods. So it's basically gonna construct a JavaScript object from this form data. Okay, and now we change it to payload. And now let me add my email again and the password and click submit. Now we have the same values again, but now we're using the best practices of HTML forms. So this is very cool. One limitation though, is whenever you want to use controlled inputs in React, for example, and uh, for example, let's go back to the app. Let's say I'm writing my first name, but you wanna convert it to a lower case on the fly, right? So this is my name, but you want to convert it to a lower case as I'm typing. Or let's say you have gaps or spaces between the name and you want to trim them, basically remove them. You still need to fall back to using the value attribute coming from React and probably on change so that you can trim them on the fly and also use state. Okay, so you might ask me, then apparently everything that you told me five minutes for, for the last five minutes is garbage. Well, actually, no. The thing is, if you have a simple form, you can go with uh, without on changes and without a state. But if you really need controlled input, then you can, you probably need to use a state, but you can still keep this submit form, right? and use it on the form element. What you're gonna do is basically use native validation attributes of React, for example, like a max, min, pattern, and you can, within JavaScript, you can still check for the, for, for the validity with, with the help of the check validity method, okay? Hey there, it's me again. I just wanted to quickly say thank you very much for watching this video and smashing the like button. And if you wanna stay up to date with such cool topics, Make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss whenever a new video is out. And I'm gonna see you in the next one.